Um, well, thank you for um, for having me. Um, uh, the first um, Dubai camp. I'm really pleased and honoured. Uh, my name is Stefan van Hoofd. I run a small company in um, in the southwest of England, and this is my presentation uh, about Drupal without coding. What can you do? Um, or how can Drupal be used to create a website without actually touching code? Right. So let's start. If you have any comments, please feel free to um, use the um, URL below, is bit.ly slash 1B9 capital F G A capital K. Any comments? Uh, okay, right, since we only have 15 minutes, let's crack on with this presentation. Okay, Drupal without coding. Um, first, a little, um, I might skip this one, but just really quickly, um, I hear, whenever I go to events, I hear a lot of people say or pronounce Drupal in a different way. I don't know how you pronounce it. I say Drupal, uh, but several people call it Drupal. Uh, since I'm um, Dutch by origin, um, Drupal is, well, it stems from, obviously, Dries, and he um, came up with it. The name, you say, you pronounce it in Dutch as Drupal, and if you spell that out, it sounds like Drupal, and that became Drupal. So here we are. Okay, um, again, I run a small company in uh, southwest of UK. I focus on building Drupal websites and using open source technologies. And one of my f other favorite um, pieces of software I use is Pyrrhic for uh, analytics. It's the Google Analytics alternative. And it's absolutely very, very good. Uh, do have a look at it if you haven't seen it um, yet. It's great. You can host your own. Um, you can host your own analytics platform. But let's move on. Okay. So why this presentation? Um, well, I had my first digital camera in 2005. I've been to I think more than 10 Drupal events over the years, and I've taken over 10,000 photographs. So what I wanted to do is build a website. Um, similar, well not similar to Flickr, but similar functionality so that I could just take a photo, upload the images and display them on the map. And I thought instead of using other networks I'll just try and build it myself in Drupal. So that's the, the, use, the use case I had. Okay, so what do you need? Um, I'm not sure what, what's, um, uh, what your skill levels are in the room, but basically um, just simply you need a web server, you need your Drupal core software, Contrib uh, contributed modules and a theme. Okay, right. So can you, if you want to build a site and you want to get it live tomorrow but you can't code, can Drupal help? Um, and I think it can. Okay, so what I've done, this is, um, these are two screenshots of my presentation, uh, of my website, sorry, uh, front page and a screenshot of um, of a mobile phone. Uh, what I've found is, in terms of the, the theme, I found a nice theme developed by a developer called Saran, Dev Saran. And this is a responsive theme. <clears throat> I've changed the colors a bit, so this is all done without coding. Okay, so let's move on. So the responsive uh, the responsive site on the it's responsive, so on the mobile phone, it uh, you get a nice little drop-down menu. Okay, <coughs> and the photographs. Okay, so we have um, I'm using a leaflet map, and uh, the middle part of the where you see the images that's a views attachment, and uh, also an exposed taxonomy filter to um, filter by the taxonomy terms, and I geolocate. Um, the photograph so you get nice markers on the map. Okay. So really quickly, what can you see in this image? I took this photo uh, of our dog um, a while ago and she was running up the hill. I took it with my cap with my phone and the information that you can get from it uh, is quite, you can get quite a lot of information from it. You can see the latitude, the longitude. I hope this all comes across okay on your screen. Um, so that's in a digital image, okay? So if you look at the image on, uh, I've done this on the Mac, so you, if you look at uh, an image on the Mac, you can see all the information. Uh, the middle 
um, the middle um, screenshot uh, shows you all the EXIF information. So things about when it was created, what uh, what camera you've used. The the third, the most bright screenshot shows you, you, you shows you the GPS information. And this is something I was really interested in because I don't. Know, I hope you can see it. The latitude and longitude. That is the information I was after. To um, to for the <coughs> for the Drupal websites to place the images on or to project the images on the map. Okay, so this is done on a computer, just a, a the viewing of the information that's in the photograph. Okay, now let's see if we can go through this. Yes, this is a short <coughs> a short video, a short recording of a tool that can be used on a it's a cross platform tool and it's called EXIF tool so the information I showed you in the screenshots in the previous slides you can also extract that information from or by using a command line tool so what I'm doing here I'm just using EXIF tool on one image and I'm just asking it to show me the information that is in the image so as you can see um, lots and lots of information and we're going to scroll up in a minute so you can see the GPS, latitude, longitude, uh, position even so all the information that is in a digital image uh, can be viewed and well with EXIF tool you can manipulate it as well so that's very very powerful and all of this you can see what phone it's made, uh, the, the camera model so all of this information is available in an image Okay, so if we then go, we'll go down in a minute. Here we go. I hope you can see all of this. Okay, not only that. So all of that information is available. Right, so this is still done on, uh, on the computer. So if we just move on a minute. <coughs> so I was started looking for ways to do the similar things that I just showed you so on the command line on my computer I was look I looked for a way uh, if that can be do if that could be done in within Drupal and lo and behold I found the EXIF module and the EXIF module is quite powerful because in it can extract the exact same information um, as you can do with the command line tool which is brilliant so what I've done, uh, I hope you're all familiar with the, the content types within Drupal. I've created a content type called Photo. And in there, I have, you have to define all the fields that you would like to extract from a photo. So I've, um, I'm asking to extract the uh, aperture, the date and time, um, the GPS information at the bottom. And that's quite um, interesting. Right, <clears throat> so extracting the information is one thing, which is quite powerful in itself. But what I was after is to actually extract the GPS or the location-based information from the images, because then I can plot it on the map. So for that, I'm using a couple of modules, and one of them is geocoder, drupal.org slash project slash geocoder. And what this does, just going back to the photo content type, um, I have the photo field and I have a geo field and the geo field you can figure that to geocode from another field. I hope this comes across okay. So you geocode from another field and then in the actual widget you say okay geocode from field photo and use the image slash exif um, geocoder. And that's how Drupal can extract the um, location-based information from an image, a digital image. Okay. Right. Just to give you an example, so all the, the previous slides. This is a, a simple example of another photo I've taken. I've uploaded it to my site, so you can see. This is basically the end result, how it looks on the site. So you can see the image, and on the right-hand side, you can see a map. And this is all automatically done by the Drupal system and the geocoding modules. 
<coughs> and then on the left hand column you have a meta um, I've created a meta tag or tab and you can see all the information from the fields I created in the content type or in the photo content type so you can see the make, model, date and time, all sorts and then uh, the bottom or the middle and the bottom you have um, the geo tab which I've created and that shows you another subset that shows you a subset of the other um, exit information so at um, altitude, latitude, longitude, references all very handy so this is basically the end result of um, a photo that's been uploaded and created with a digital camera I mean a digital camera with a GPS so this can be a phone or a digital SLR with a built-in GPS okay right so I thought I take all these photographs but I don't really want to upload them one by one because that takes a lot of time so I went on the lookout on the Drupal.org modules page and I found the bulk media upload module and this is extremely extremely handy because what you can do with this is let's see if I can play this yeah so this is an example of how to upload images by bulk so I've selected a couple of images I'm dragging them in so this is the bulk media upload module I can type the body text and this body text will apply for all the image or to all the images I've um, selected and then I go down and you can create the tags so this is Drupal Drupal Camp London these were made okay and I click generate nodes and what happens now is the bulk media upload module is going to upload the images for me I've selected four images. <coughs> it's going to upload the images, and I don't know if you can see the progress bar, but it's uploading the images. And after it's done this, it will create four separate nodes. You can you can configure it to create one node, but I wanted it to create wo uh, four separate nodes because I wanted to have um, a photo, a node per photograph, so that I can plot the photos on the map individually. Okay, so what it's done now, it's created those images or those con uh, those pieces of content. And just scrolling down here you can see it's loading. Okay, so you can see all these images. And so this is all I've done. I've select, I've dragged the images in, typed a little bit of body text, <coughs> and now the images I've just uploaded are displayed on on the front page I've changed the front page sl slightly since this presentation was made but just to, this is just an example so you upload the images, you type the body text and um, a little bit of configuring and the system, the Drupal system does everything for you which is great so let's just move on quickly right, geocoding so how does that work? actually okay we're not talking about coding so let's take out the coding right so it's playing now I hope I hope this comes across so this is the mapping bit of it all I've just again at the bottom you see the images that we've just uploaded they've automatically been added to the um, to the view and they've also automatically been mapped on or there's a marker on the map okay If we just scroll on a bit, okay. I don't know if that came across. Okay, let's scroll down a bit more. Okay. Right. There we are. Yeah, this looks a little bit clunky, but it's just to show you that you can zoom in on an image. So if you click on that's you, or that's us. So if you click on the marker, you can see uh, the image, and I've just selected to show the um, the geolocation as well. Okay, right. Let's just move on a bit. And this is the views. I don't know if ever, anyone of you has used views, but you can attach. I've used, I'm using a views attachment for this. 
Right, so how is that made? How is that page made? Again, it's obviously it is, it is a view, and this is a view. I've called it leaflet map, and the leaflet map uses the leaflet and IP geolocation suite of modules. If you're into geolocation, um, if that has an interest to you, please do and have a look at the IP geolocation module. It's very powerful. Out of the box, it does so much. It's in incredible, really. And the little slideshow at the bottom is made uh, with or by using JQFX. There are other uh, slideshow modules available, so feel free to um, to have a browse on the modules page, and I'm sure you'll find a slideshow that works for you. I'm only displaying ten items there. Right. Okay. And scroll down, and that's it. Right. And let's go on to the next slide. Okay, a couple of modules for you to look at. If you're interested in location-based modules or want to build a site that needs to use geo location or anything similar, have a look at drupal.org slash project underscore uh, sorry, slash project underscore module slash categories and there is a location tab or a location section. If you have a look at that, expand it and you'll find all these modules and more. Um, another one that's quite interesting is Leaflet and uh, that's what I've used for the maps to display the maps but there are other uh, one other one that I've used before is Open Layers also very very powerful, even more powerful maybe. Uh, the Bulk Media Upload module can be found under Bulk underscore Media underscore Upload and the bottom one, I haven't mentioned this yet, but that's Drupad. Let's just quickly <coughs> quickly look at that. So once you've built your Drupal website, how, and I mean, in my use case, I use um, a photographs. So I thought, okay, I'll take photographs with my phone, and how can I upload them when I'm actually on the go? So how can I do that? So again, I had a look on the Drupal website, and I found Drupad. And Drupad consists of an app for the iPhone, which is uh, paid for, and the module, so project slash Drupad. And that's quite interesting. Even if you're not into photography, Drupad allows you to do quite a lot. You can have multiple sites, um, and you can actually manage, manage your site from your phone. So you can see your comments, you can see your content, you can create content, you do things with the users. You can even um, put your site or run cron, put it in maintenance mode, and even flush caches, which sometimes can be quite handy. And all, all of this is done by your phone, so wherever you are, you can do that. Right. Um, again, you can see your, your content types. I'm just quickly uh, skipping through this, your different content types. And basically what it does, it, when you create a piece of content, it downloads the form, um, the third image on the bottom row, the blog entry example, and you can just type away and save it. You can even add images, um, have taxonomy if you have taxonomy fields in your content type, and um, a quite an easy way to to manage your site with that. Um, I think just going back, Drupal might become slightly obsolete with Drup when Drupal 8 is out because Drupal 8 is very much geared up for mobile devices so you can manage your site through your well you don't need an, an external app for that but um, in terms of quickly running cron or flashing the cache I think that's one of the quickest ways I've found it all right right if you are not I mean you're all at the camp which is great if you, if you want to get more involved I would say if you haven't done so yet create a Drupal user ID um, start building sites that's how I started uh, join, a join a local user group or set one up and go to events. Well, you're already there, which is great. Um, talking about user groups, I run a, um, a user group twice a month called Drupal Somerset. And it's www.drupalsomerset.co.uk. If you want to do a talk remotely, please give me a call or send a message or a uh, message through the site or tweet Drupal Somerset and we'll get in touch and we can do you can do a presentation for us okay well wow, that was really quickly I think the quickest I've ever done this presentation thank you very much um, yeah if you want to keep in touch you can follow me on Twitter or email me 
or find me on LinkedIn. And I think that's it. Thank you very much, Stefan. Oh. Um, have we got any questions for Stefan? Any questions? Can you hear Mohammed? No, I can I can hear you clearly, but I can't I I can I can't hear Mohammed. Once again, Mohammed, I wanted to ask about Leaflet. Leaflet, yes. Is it uh, open source? Yeah, it's all open source. It's uh, it's all open source. I started I started using Open Layers, which is also open source, and then I found Leaflet, and they um, have very pretty maps, and it's all open source. Have a look if you look at the uh, the Leaflet page on uh, the Leaflet module page on Drupal. It's a lightweight JavaScript library. Uh, have a look on that, and it uses the Leaflet library, which um, the module page has a uh, a link on. Uh, you can look at the site. It's made by Cloud Cloud Made, made I believe. Have a look there. It's it's all open source, and it's it looks really very really, really good. Can you use like uh, Google Maps uh, Open Layers with Leaflet? Or is it uh, its own uh, open source? Uh... No, no, no. The nice thing is, I don't know. I haven't shown this in my shown this in my presentation. But <clears throat> what you can do with Leaflet, there is a, a sub module called Leaflet More Maps, and Leaflet, I believe, um, I believe, a standard you can use Google Maps. But anyway, the Leaflet More Maps module allows you to select different map providers and different map types so you can have for example a watercolor map or it's really 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 cool I, d I would do, yeah do do have a look at the leaflet module and the leaflet more maps it's really really good Thanks. all right we've got another question for you Stefan yeah must... uh, can, can you hear me soon very vaguely, but yeah, go on. Maybe you can repeat the question, uh, Kubert. Okay. Yes, uh, I just uh, entered this branch that feature where you can find out. I can't hear him, sorry. Bear with us for a second. Thank you. Just hang over. Stefan? Me, I think. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> can okay. you hear us, Stefan? Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. Can you hear me still? Yeah, go on. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Stefan, are you familiar? Are you following on the, the features added uh, by Pinterest on the images? Pinterest? Sorry? Are you familiar with Pinterest feature in you know, image? Features that they have been adding every couple of weeks. So I can't, I can't quite understand. Is it? Did you say printers? Pinterest. Pinterest. Oh, Pinterest. Yes. As you know, they are very heavy on image and image processing. Yes, yes, they are indeed. Yes, I'm not. I mean, I have a Pinterest account, but uh, to be honest, I haven't really used it. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, go on. And, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they added a feature where you can find details information, detailed information about any image that a uh, user posted. But they use an, an outside agent. Ah, oh, really? It's the outside agent that they link with, and they can provide you all the details you want to know about any image that's been posted on Pinterest page. Uh, is, is that, uh, I'm just wondering if you'd be familiar with this. No, I'm this. not. This, uh, this sounds very interesting and maybe a little bit scary as well. <laughs> uh, does that include um, geolocation as well, like l latitude and longitude? I think so. They have a lot of geographic information. There. Oh, really? <laughs> but they, have, they use a database from a third party. They, they link to. I mean, uh, it's not just an algorithm. They, they, they can match the image and they can show you a lot of details information about the image yeah. from a database owned by a third party. I don't I forgot the name of it. Okay. Well, that's, that's, that's really interesting. I'll have to have a look at that. Thank you for that. 
But yeah, this this actually shows when you because a lot of people they they upload images to Twitter, Facebook, um, Pinterest, all of these social networking sites, and if you just upload an image, um, most of them get compressed, but the location-based information and all the other active information, when you don't do anything about it, it all gets included. <clears throat> and this is, I think, where where this Pinterest service uh, comes into play, because since that information is available, it can be used, and it sounds as if this external party um, has, I don't know, harvested or something like that, uh, all that information, and created a search engine, or what sounds like a search engine for it. It's pretty nifty, but um, yeah, I don't know how you feel about that in terms of privacy and finding finding out where images are being taken and things like that. It's kind of dangerous, though, right? Yeah. It's got a lot of private information about your phone, yeah. right? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, because you can, as I as I showed you in the um, in the slides, I mean the EXIF information you can extract the make, the model, I mean the exact location where the photo was taken. All of that information is available. So if you if you magnify this by the hundreds of millions of photographs that are uploaded to the internet, then you can get some really interesting data. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I'll have a look at that. I didn't. I, I haven't heard about that before, but that's that's really good. Thank you. Thank you very much, and speak to you soon. Thank you for your okay. time. Okay. Well, have a good camp, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.